What's happening VC? Eric the Viking, uh, back again with a new camera setup. Uh, basically I've been getting sick of my webcam. I've tried doing three videos recently and it just... It, it keeps playing back out of sync and delayed. I don't know if it's my computer or something, so I'm going to try the iPhone approach. Uh, it, it could work, it could not, we'll see. Um, so I've basically got my iPhone hooked up and I've blue tacked my iPhone to the top of my monitor so I can see myself and yeah, it's a good camera so I don't see why it wouldn't work. So yeah, um, I'm back from Turkey. I had an awesome time, uh, got burnt. The weather was great, the people were great, made some, made some cool friends. Got up and sang with the uh, band that were in the hotel. Got up and sang Superstition, that was a good laugh. Uh, yeah, um, so before I start this video, which as you can see from the title is uh, about Brazil, um, I've, yeah, I've been thinking about doing a whole new sort of approach anyway. Instead of just, just always doing videos focusing on certain things, I want to like, um, there's a whole other series I've got in mind which I'm going to keep quiet for now. And I'm going to start, uh, well, I want to do a little tour of the house. I'm sure you guys would love to see. Um, the studio and everything upstairs, or music room, it's not a proper studio. And now with this iPhone, I should be able to do that. Um, so yeah, so DC, I know you mentioned yesterday you're still waiting to see my Brazil video. Well, this is it. Um, this might just, it, it might be in two parts. I'll see how long it takes. I've got quite a lot of albums to get through. Before I start showing them, um, a little bit about how I got into music from Brazil. Um, it all started when I read about the mutants in Mojo magazine and liked what I heard. So I, I bought the first album and just fell in love with it. And it sort of took a while for me to sort of start listening to other Brazilian stuff because I just didn't know where, where to go to, as it were. But then when I worked in the record shop, people used to put things on. I'd hear stuff that way. I heard Marcos Valle that way, who became another artist that I proper got into. Then I heard the Arthur Verakai album. That changed everything. Um, I heard about that through Mad Lib and MF Doom, always raving about it. Um, and then... Yeah, and then obviously I started looking for things that Arthur Verakai was involved in. Got into Georgi Ben after that. And only recently have I got into some of the art other artists which mean more to me than any of the others I've been listening to before. So it just goes to show you're always discovering other things, you know. So, um, yeah. So, basically, in the last two months I've gone crazy for Brazilian stuff and bought quite a lot of records, some directly from Brazil. Um, because a lot of them weren't pressed over here and you just can't find them in England, they're very hard to get. Um, even, you know, some of them I've got from America, there seems to be quite a few Brazilian pressings and that in America, but obviously most of them are still in Brazil. Um, so yeah, so let's start, shall we? So first, Georgie Ben, don't need to say much about Georgie Ben, it's just a legend. Um, this is uh, the first Georgie Ben album I heard, his 1969 self-titled album. This is just brilliant. Got to get hang the hang of doing it this way. Sorry. Yeah, this album is just brilliant. It's just an awesome album. And it's um, an original mono pressing on Philips. And it is beautiful. Oh, wrong way. The condition is just lovely. Now, I got this... Um, quite some time ago now. It's a mono pressing. The sleeve's a little bit tatty, but the, the record is, is superb for its age. And especially because a lot of Brazilian albums are not always in the best shape. Um, this is a really nice example. So yeah, I mean, this album's just brilliant. You've got tracks like Take It Easy, My Brother Charlie, Domingas, just a great album. And it didn't sell much at the time, apparently, because I think it, Brazilian government sort of cracked down on some of the lyrics on it or something like that. I don't think it got withdrawn or anything like that, but it just didn't so it didn't sell as well as some of his other stuff had previously, because obviously he's always been quite big over there. And then I've got Four Subruta, great sleeve. I mean this is the thing with the it's the covers as well that do it for me with Brazilian albums, they're just brilliant. Yeah, this album's awesome too. The mono pressing 1970. They didn't start doing stereo pressings in Brazil until about 1971. Um, yeah, this isn't in, in amazing shape, but it, it plays well. It's pretty scratched, but it plays fine. It will 
I'll do it till I find the nicer one. Yeah, it's also a really good album. It's got Charles Jr. on it, Pulo Pulo. Yeah, it's awesome. Good stuff. Uh, my favourite Georgie Ben album is probably Negro Elendo, which I discovered because Arthur Verakai has got an arrangement credit on there. You can see his name just there. Can you see that? So Arthur Verakai was involved in this album, which made me want to check it out. 1971 this came out. It didn't actually sell that well. I don't think, because it always is harder to get than the other albums. Maybe it's just because everyone wants it, because it's so good. That could be the case. This is a stereo pressing. Uh, it's got tracks like Comanche on it, Sigana, Que Maravilla, Villa, sorry. Brilliant. Um, another one, this one's quite easy to find. This was also pressed in England. Didn't sell over here, but um, it, it was released in England. Um, this is a Brazilian pressing from 1972. This is simply called Ben. Still some... Oh man, there's still some really good stuff on All of, Well, all of his 70s albums I've heard I've really liked. Um, yeah, awesome. Although his funkiest is probably Africa Brazil, which I don't have a copy of because it's just goes for a lot. Of, well, not for a lot. It just doesn't turn up much. I will find one, I'm sure. But you know, uh, I mean, look at that scene. That's just brilliant. A tabua de Esmeralda. Yeah, this is awesome too. Very cool. 1974. There's some really good tracks on that. I think the thing that gets me. Especially on that album, the drumming is really unique. There's some really odd beats on there, and, and also the way the drums sound on that album. It's just really good. Another artist that I haven't got into as much, but I got this on Impulse because it was cheap. Now this guy was huge in Brazil. This is his first album, I believe, Roberto Carlos. Erasmo Carlos was his brother as well, I believe. 1969 this is on CBS. Really nice pressing. Um, um, I haven't listened to this enough, because I only just picked it up recently. But from what I've, I've flicked through it, you know, and played a couple of tracks, and from what I heard, I really liked it. I can't get out the sleeve to show you the label. Hang on a second. And it is on CBS. Wrong way, again. CBS. Mono pressing, 1969. The vinyl is mint on this, um, which is very unusual for, for a Brazilian album this old. And the sleeve is really nice as well. But this one isn't too hard to find. You see this one quite a lot, and it's not expensive. Now, another Brazilian artist that I've massively got into this year is Gal Costa, who was beautiful. Still is. This is her first album from 1968. Um, oh, this album's just awesome. This came out, yeah, 68. It's on Philips again. Now, the thing that amazes me with this is that it still has the original insert and this is so delicate and flimsy and it's just it's never been creased it's got a couple of stains on the back along the sides and someone's name that doesn't really bother me but look at that that is just beautiful really nice before I had this I had the um, stereo reissue from 1982 which I've just sold actually but to be honest the mono mixes still sound really good and there's some great funk on this album man and Caetano Veloso and Gilberto Gil make appearances on this album too. Really good. I haven't got a second album. Also, it's just called Gal, but most people call it Cinema Olympia. If anyone finds one of those, let me know, because I would love to get one. Because every copy I've found has been too wrecked or too expensive. It's, it's definitely a masterpiece. It's just a crazy, wigged out psych album. And it is funky as hell as well. I love it. That was the first Gal album I actually heard. The third album here, Legal, or Legal, awesome sleeve again, and I believe Arthur Verakai has got some credits on this as well, uh, some mono from 1970, bear with me, 1970 there, beautiful label, you'll notice that a lot of these albums are on Philips, I believe that was the biggest label in, in Brazil at the time, they also owned Polydor over there. Now this next Gal album, you can see why this caused a bit of a stir at the time, because there is some serious camel toe going on there. Um, <laughs> yeah. 1972, this album's called India. Awesome. Got a nice gatefold too. Now some of this album's quite sort of uh, mellow, acoustic, laid back. But there's some really good heavy funk on here too. 
track Pontos de Luz springs to mind. Check that out. I think it's on YouTube. Um, now next, Donato. Now I'm not entirely sure how to say his first name. First name. I think it's Qual. G J O A O J O A O. Yeah, this is a reissue from the early 90s, a Brazilian reissue. Oh, I got this from Japan. The original is very expensive, very expensive. But I was pleased that I didn't know it had it when I bought it, but it's also got a, an insert, which the original also came with. There's Marcos Valle there, who had a big part of production on this album, I believe. Yeah, this album's just superb. Yeah, not a bad pressing as well. 1994, I think it is. And this is still, I mean, this is still, I've seen this still go for about 50 odd pounds. So the original's like 300, something stupid like that. Um, the problem is with finding an original, it's not, it's not the money, it, well, that is a lot of money. I wouldn't pay that for an album myself, but unless I was, you know, unless I could afford it. But um, my girlfriend would probably kill me anyway, understandably. It's a lot of money to pay for a record. Um, but yeah, this album, if you guys love Fender Rhodes like I do, this album is one of the heaviest Fender Rhodes. It is just full of Fender Rhodes, this album. And it is funky, it is mellow. It's got um, Calaboca Minino, which is the first track I had on this video. I hope these, uh, the music's coming out right. Yeah, awesome album. Um, next up, another artist that I've got into fairly recently, who was, who was huge in Brazil and still is worldwide now, Gilberto Gil. This is his uh, second album, I believe. His first one for Phillips from 1968. This doesn't turn up much at all. Um, I don't think it's sold an awful lot of the time. And the Mutants are the backing band on it, which makes it even more awesome. So, yeah, the music's great. The album's great. It's mono, of course. Um, the interesting thing about the older sleeves, like from around 68, is that they were, they literally have no join in the sleeves. They just, two sheets of paper, well, it's a sheet of paper folded there. And that's it, not stuck together with anything. So you can see someone stapled this here years ago to keep it together. But I find it's better just to keep it in a sleeve like that. <laughs> it's a great album, great sleeve, awesome stuff. Really good Tropicalia album. This is next one for Philips from 69, also called Gilberto Gil, but more commonly known as Cerebro Electronico after the first track. I mean, that sleeve is just awesome. Now, the story with Gilberto Gil and Keitano Vilosu, who I'll talk about as well, I'm not sure if I said his surname right there, sorry Keitano. Um, both of them were, were sort of leaders of the Tropicalia movement, in a way. I think they were the most popular over there, in terms of success. Um, now, the story is, I don't know how accurate I'm getting this, the Brazilian government were notoriously strict back then. And they did not like Tropicalia. They didn't like the lyrics, they didn't like the music. The lyrics were, were very political. I mean, Tropicalia was influenced by the hippies and psychedelia and everything like that. And a lot of the lyrics are very political, I believe, and sort of, in some cases, bad-mouthing the government. Not, not so much, but, you know. So, they had to put a stop to these crazy guys making this crazy music. So they basically sent them well, sent them to jail, which is bad enough. Um, that album, Gilberto actually recorded the vocals in his prison cell, which for 1969 is pretty ahead of its time in terms of production. Um, the same went for Caetano Veloso on his 1969 album. Then they were exiled to London, made a few albums over here, which were released in Brazil. Weren't released over here, I don't believe. Uh, and then in 1972 we were allowed back. Now I'm not sure the circumstances in which they were allowed back. I don't know if the government saw... I need to look up more history on Brazil, I think. But I mean, I mean, in terms of discrimination, that is just insane. You know, you wouldn't hear of it these days. Another story is Georgie Ben got in trouble, I think in 1970, for having women dancing suggestively on his stage. Whereas today, with the shitty commercialist commercialist commercial music that we have around now that is the norm but there you go hey what can you do times change but now they have been recognized for their genius they are praised highly worldwide as they should be like fuck is what i say um this album was recorded in london um this was also released in america on the paramount label which is pretty rare this is the brazilian pressing from 71 in mono which uh 
I don't know if anyone's ever seen a stereo one of these, but I haven't. Um, musically, it's a really minimal album. It's really nice, sort of folky, funky folk stuff. He's just singing and playing acoustic guitar, and there's bass and uh, bongos, basically. Really good. And there's an awesome cover of Can't Find My Way Home, the Blind Faith track on here, too. Um, this is another really nice copy. Really nice. Again, self titled. Um, the next one is probably my favourite Gilberto Gil album, Espresso 2222. Two, two, two. That is actually the title. Now, the sleeve is very elaborate here. I will try and demonstrate how it works. It's a gatefold as well, but it kind of has flaps, which it's not going to stay, but it sort of turns it into a kind of circle. Um, there's a bottom flap as well. It's very fidgety, but both sides actually do it. If you look here, you can see the flaps on these as well. Very strange idea. Um, and I imagine it wasn't cheap at the time for packaging. That's awesome. Awesome design. Yeah, musically, I mean, this is his first album when he got back to Brazil. It's very experimental, it's very funky. There's some really nice acoustic stuff on here too. Uh, there's jazz in there. There's all sorts on this album. And for me, it is his strongest album. It is just superb. And that is, I'm glad to have got one of those. They're not too hard to find. Not, well, like I say, they, they don't turn up at all over here, but getting one from Brazil is not so tricky if you can find someone that won't pay a uh, charge a fortune for postage. Os Incriveis, this is actually one of the first Brazilian albums I ever bought. Um, after hearing The Mutants, I started looking around for more Brazilian albums, and I liked the look of this. I just saw it in a record shop in London, um, which was surprising because it's an original Brazilian press. Um, and it's not a bad album. I, it's, uh, I haven't listened to it in a while. I only found it in the shelves recently because I actually completely forgot I got it. Um, I remember at one point I was thinking of selling it and then I listened to it and I was like, no, that's too good to sell. I definitely need to listen to it again. Um, I remember that the Vendetto de Bananas was really good, the Shoji Ben cover, and this or Vagabondo was good. There's some really good sort of soul and funk stuff on here. There's a cover of Seesaw, you know, the Arthur Conley track. So, is it Arthur Conley? Or is it Wilson Pickett? I can't remember. It's Percy Sledge, isn't it? It's one of those. <laughs> um, that's embarrassing. Yeah, but you know what I often find? I mean, like I say, I forgot I had this. The thing is with Brazilian albums is hardly any of them ever have anything written on the spine. So I keep all my Brazilian albums separate now so I know where they are. I mean, everything's alphabetical, but still, if it's hidden away in there, I, you know, I, I, forget, I might forget it's there. Especially if it's an album I haven't listened to much. Um, but that is on my in my listening pile now. <laughs> um, now you can hear him in the background. Now this is Tim Meyer, who is uh, for me probably the best Brazilian artist for me. Um, that's quite a statement. But I only got into him recently. Now this is his first album here, which I used to see all the time. Um, really cheap as well, and I, I just never bothered with it and obviously I regret it now well I don't now because I've got one but it's just taken me so long to discover this guy this came out in 1970 his first album it was I think it was even number one in Brazil it was huge in Brazil and um, yeah I mean the story of Tim Meyer is, is, is enough to make you want to check out this guy more it's an original mono pressing in beautiful shape this has just got some really good soul on it. I'll tell a brief little story about Tim Meyer. I'm sure most of you that are watching this know. Um, he lived in New York for about eight years in the 60s, got deported for drug use. So <laughs> that's the start. So obviously in New York, he, he did learn to speak fluent English and you'll often find on his albums, there is always the odd English song. Um, what else is there to say about Tim Meyer? He was kind of like Sly Stone in the way that he was an awesome producer. He was a perfectionist. Yeah, he was a musician as well. He could play drums, he could play guitar, he played keys. And um, sadly, drink and drugs got the better of him over the years. And he never hid it. He was always, apparently, he was always quite sort of uh, in your face with interviews about his drug use and, and always openly smoking spliffs, sort of like Fella Cootie did, you know. Um, sadly, he, he left the, the planet way too early in 1997 and he was in bad shape. He just didn't look after himself. But uh, there you go. There you go.
This is second album here. Again, you'll find a lot of Tim Meyers albums are self-titled. I don't know why they did that in Brazil, but there you go. But this album's awesome. It's a step up from the album before, in my opinion. Um, it's just got some really nice soul on it. I mean, the two, the two English language tracks, Broken Heart and I Don't Know What To Do With Myself. It could almost be Joe Baton. It's, it's really good. Yeah, that's a stereo pressing. Nice copy. Yeah. Now, I don't have the third one, but that is on my list because it's got some awesome tracks on it too. Similar to the second one, really. Um, his fourth album is probably one of my favourites. Um, again, self-titled, 1973. Um, it, it's got the track Ro Confesso on it, My Confession, which is what got me into Tim Moyer because it's just such a good track. It's a soul track, you know, it's a nice sort of summer feeling track. It's just brilliant. And it, it's, it's all about him trying to get his girlfriend back. And it didn't work apparently, which, <laughs> you know. But I've actually been learning some Portuguese and, and, and pronunciation and dialect. Not fluently, I must say, because, you know, I mean, I, I still kick myself that I can't speak fluent Norwegian when a lot of my background is in Norway, uh, family-wise, you know. Anyway, going off on one again. Um, but yeah, I would, I would love to. I mean, I've been, I've learned how to sing this properly, so I'm going to do a cover of Rogue Confesso at some point. Portuguese is just a beautiful language. I don't think I need to say more about it than that. So that's an original pressing from '73. Awesome album. You can see by this time he, you know, he put a lot of weight on. Like I say, he didn't really look after himself. Now, DC and Van. I'm not sure if you're into Brazil stuff. Um, this. This is probably the rarest Brazilian album I have. Um, I'm sure you know what it is because it's a Tim Meyer album. This is Rationale Volume 1. Now this isn't as rare as, as some people make it out to be. It's still rare though. I'll, I'll, this, is, this one's a bit different. I'll show you why in a bit. But um, the story with this is in 1974 he discovered the cult called Rationale Culture or Culture Rationale who believed that all humans were going to be abducted by aliens for a better life. Which sounds quite cool, doesn't it? But um, Tim just got totally into it, got rid of all his possessions, shaved his hair off, stopped drinking and doing drugs, lost weight, started wearing long white flowing robes and things like that, made his family convert, made his band members convert, <laughs> um, and he made two albums all about this. Now Polydor were not interested in this sort of religious propaganda thing, so Tim put it out on his, he was the first Brazilian artist to start his own label, Soroma. This is the first release on Soroma. Um, so he definitely set a lot of trends, he was definitely a trendsetter. And this is a beautiful copy, absolutely beautiful. I got this from a good guy in Brazil that I'm always buying things on. I don't know where he gets his stuff from, but there you go. Now it's got the lyric insert, which is often missing. A bit creased, but, but the special thing about it is I've never seen this. I don't know how many of these are left. It's actually got some of the rationale culture propaganda. Um, it's just got this one sheet, and it was when he showed me this, I was like, I've got to buy it. It was quite expensive, but it was a lot cheaper than it. It would be like £200 over here. It was cheaper than that. I said, I've got to get this. I can't say no to that. And it's it's a really good copy. Now, volume two, I don't have. The, the, the story is that in about 75, just after volume two had come out, he realized that the cult was a load of shit and the guy was just after people's money that was running the cult, denounced it, destroyed all the remaining copies he had. Um, obviously, a lot of volume one had already sold, but volume two, a lot of it was destroyed. Um, so there's not many volume twos around and ironically it is the best of the two, it is the funkiest. I don't have one, I don't know if any of you guys do, or if you've got a spare, doubt it. Um, but yeah, this is still rare though. I mean, like I say, it's on a, it was on a tiny label, very limited distribution, shops would not sell it, he used to just sell them at his gigs apparently. So you get an idea of um, how rare that is. In 1976, he was back on Polydor when he realised it was all the religious was thing was just not happening. Um, put his weight back on, got back to his old self. This album's just awesome, and this one didn't sell much at all. Um, the track Rhodesia single was a hit, I believe. This is from '76, and this is another beautiful copy that I got from the same seller that I mentioned a minute ago. This is just beautiful. I'm very pleased to have one of these because I there was one on it. I've seen one come up sell in England. It was a hundred pounds, uh, you know, and it's not. I, I I can't afford to be paying that sort of money for records. Um, now, 
I think that's it for part one. I'll save the rest for next time. Um, but before I finish, in, uh, to add to the Tim Meyer thing, um, that they're all of his albums I have at the moment. I mean, I've only just started buying him in the last few months. But I would love to get his 1978 self-titled album on the Soroma label, which was all in English, um, which is why Polydor wouldn't release it, and which is why no one bought it in Brazil. It turns out that that is one of his best albums, in my opinion. It's just a brilliant soul funk album. Now, if anyone is watching this, and if anyone has ever seen one come up for sale or may have a copy, DC, I'm looking at you. I looked at the wrong camera then. DC, I'm looking at you. Um, yeah, I would love to know. Just, just, I would love to see one because I've seen one on Pop Psych without a sleeve, and that sold for quite a bit. Apparently, there are more copies around without sleeves. I'd like one with a sleeve. Um, the last one, no. I still, I can't even get a, a price of what I would have to pay if I wanted one. There's no reissues of it. I don't want a CD, but I would love to get it. So if anyone out there has seen it, um, I might make a wanted poster, start sticking it up around the place. Okay, guys, so um, yeah, you've been watching um, Brazilians part one. Um, I will put up part two tomorrow. I hope you're all uh, having a good day and everything. And um, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I'd be pleased to hear your opinions and everything, and, and how you feel about all this Brazilian nonsense that I'm sort of drilling into your skulls. No, I'm joking. Um, I'm sure you, if you're watching this, you like Brazilian music, so yeah. Um, so guys, part two will be on tomorrow, the rest of the alphabet, as it were. And um, as I say, keep your eyes peeled, because I'm going to be posting more now. Um, yeah, you know, it's good stuff. So guys, take it easy and I will be back soon. Peace.